In the oldest stadium ever to host a Super Bowl, the youngest quarterback ever to start in one completed four of his first five passes to set up a field goal and a 3-0 lead for the Miami Dolphins. While Dan Marino is the game's state-of-the-art passer, the San Francisco 49ers' Joe Montana is football's most versatile quarterback. In an early demonstration of the multiple talents of their offense, the 49ers retaliated with a 78-yard scoring drive that culminated in a 33-yard touchdown pass from Montana to halfback Carl Monroe. The 49ers touchdown would be the first of many pearls in a large collection of offensive gems. At 5'8", 166 pounds, Monroe was the smallest player on the field, but he had made the first big play, and the 49ers moved ahead 7-3. to three. Fantastic. You know, they talk about Marino having a great arm, and I'll tell you, nobody could have thrown that ball any harder and on target than Montana did that time. Well, he had plenty of zip, and I'll tell you, the run that he made on third down was the one that set it up. The balance of the game swung back to the Dolphins when coach Don Shula instructed Marino to employ a no-huddle, hurry-up pass offense. Caught with their run-oriented defense on the field and without the time to send in their pass defense specialists, the 49ers were vulnerable to Miami's quick-striking air attack. No huddle offense. They come up the line of scrimmage quickly again. San Francisco cannot adjust his defense. Marino ready. He fires off the left side. Caught on the run that time by the tight end Johnson. Pass the Marino's 21-yard pass to tight end Dan Johnson was the key play in this drive. And it succeeded because Johnson beat linebacker Dan Buns, who is not usually in the game on passing situations. And man-to-man -man coverage is not his strong point. Marino rolls to his right, flips to the corner of the end zone, complete the Dan Johnson for a touchdown. Just bing, bing, bing down the field in that two-minute offense. Dan Marino had completed nine of ten passes for 103 yards, and his touchdown toss to Johnson gave Miami a 10-7 lead. But this first period turned out to be nothing more than an illusion, teasing people into believing that Dan Marino was his usual unstoppable self. In the rarefied atmosphere of championship competition, a game rarely turns on a single play, but rather on the accumulated results of force, finesse, and brains. In a record-setting scoring spree in the second quarter, the 49ers unleashed all of these elements in a hurricane of 21 points. It's caught there by Craig, gets it and goes in for a touchdown. Roger Craig taking the pass from Joe Montana. Good for the score, and the Niners are back on top. Get it in, Joe! Montana cross back, short drop, fakes once. He's got to run it himself. He's in at the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! It's a handoff given to Craig. Craig patters his way to the goal line. He goes in for a 49er touchdown. So now it's an 18-point uh, deficit with the 49ers out in front by a score of 28 to 10 and the Dolphins being pushed all over the place. The genesis of all three touchdown drives was Bill Walsh's plan to attack Miami's inexperienced inside linebackers. And throughout the second quarter, he exploited their inability to cover his elusive running backs. 
Roger Craig, number 33, caught eight passes for 82 yards in Super Bowl 19. Most of them at the expense of number 53, rookie linebacker Jay Brophy. Montana also had success throwing to his tight end, Russ Francis. When the linebackers followed a play fake to the outside, Francis, number 81, cut against the flow toward the inside and became an open target in the middle. Another clever play designed to confuse Miami's linebackers called for the backs and the guards to pull out in opposite directions. When the linebackers split to cover the backs, Francis had an open route through the middle. The Dolphin linebackers became so pass conscious, heading downfield with their backs to the scrimmage line, that they often neglected Montana's ability to run and his 59 yards rushing was the most ever for a quarterback in a Super Bowl. The 49ers' success was not only a triumph of tactics, but also a tribute to the talent in their offensive line. The texture of San Francisco's dominance was clearly woven into the intricate mayhem of line play. In the second quarter, the Dolphin defense, which had struggled all year, was suddenly pried apart by the 49ers, and points poured through on all sides. The 49ers were equally impressive on defense because Bill Walsh had rearranged his personnel and completely disarmed Miami's explosive attack. He shifted to six defensive backs with one linebacker, Keena Turner, and four down linemen. Since the four-man front is often vulnerable to the run, the Dolphins immediately explored this possibility but the 49er linemen were penetrating too quickly. Gary Johnson, number 97, and Fred Dean, number 74, crushed the weak Dolphin running game with quickness. The 49ers' revised defense exposed the Dolphins as a one-dimensional team, and then proceeded to destroy that dimension. <laughs> Their relentless pass rush did not dull Marino's determination, but did limit his effectiveness and caused him to play below the level of skill with which he led Miami to the AFC Championship. In the first 13 minutes of the second quarter, while the 49ers were scoring 21 points, the most prolific single season passer in NFL history completed only one of six passes. Marino has to get something started, or it, it might be the biggest blowout in Super Bowl history. But I think that maybe that pass rush is starting to put some heat on Marino and, and forcing him to do just a little bit of what he didn't want to do, throw quicker than he would like. Oh, we got to give him a little bit more time. Coming up. we got to give him another half a second, huh? All right. The Dolphins had started the game with a bolt of offensive lightning, but they were ending the first half 
in a drizzle of dreary incompletions. With two minutes left in the half, the Dolphins regrouped, and for a fleeting instant it looked as if Miami and Marino were regaining control. The Dolphins zipped down the field for 72 yards on a splendid drive that had its principal momentum furnished by a 30-yard pass to tight end Joe Rose. The drive culminated in a field goal by Uwe von Schaman, and San Francisco's lead was cut to 15 points. On the ensuing kickoff, von Schaman's grounder was fielded by reserve guard Guy McIntyre, number 62. At first, McIntyre wanted to down the ball, but after some encouragement from his teammates, he decided to get up. He coughed up the ball, and Miami recovered. Ball is going to Miami with four seconds left. Well, there's a rookie mistake. Oh, boy. Here's Uwe von Schaumann ready to attempt a field goal of 30 yards. He kicks it, and the Dolphins get a gift of three points. And going in here at half, the Dolphins will get the second half kickoff, Don. So that does give them an added little lift at this stage. The second half began in conditions perfectly suited to the filming of The Hound of the Baskervilles. The 49er defense rolled in on Miami like the fog, and the Dolphins fell into desperate trouble. Clayton, the shining light of Miami's receiving core, was only a dim, distant beacon, obscured by San Francisco's close guarding secondary. Marino was never able to recapture the brilliance that had made him the NFL's most valuable player in 1984, and his protection folded before the unrelenting pressure of the 49er rush. was sacked four times in the second half, the most ever in his two-year career. Hockey goes to full forward, pass with a rush. He's going to be sacked. They got him. They got him back at the 15-yard line, throwing him for a loss on the play of 11 yards. For the Miami Dolphins, the song of Super Bowl 19 was a sad one. Composed years ago by singer James Taylor, who wrote... There were sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Bill Walsh has built the 49ers into a championship team by teaching them to do the unexpected. And Joe Montana is Walsh's prize pupil. As good a passer as he is, Montana may not be in Marino's class, but as great a passer as Marino is, he can't beat you as many ways as Montana can. Get six, oh, get six! In Super Bowl 19, the 49er offense did more things and did them to a more refined degree than any team in Super Bowl history. They won in a performance that seemed more musical than physical. Every note was perfect.
Montana orchestrated Walsh's symphonic offense and proved that football is still a team game, not a one-man aerial circus. Roll over, Montana. Tell Marino the news. The 49ers gained 537 yards in total offense, the most ever in a Super Bowl. A 40-yard completion from Montana to Wendell Tyler late in the third period put the 49ers in position to clinch their second world title in four years. And the Miami defense just cannot cope with the 49ers now. over the left side, caught by Craig on the way to the end zone, and Craig goes in for the score. Roger Craig taking the pass from Montana, goes 16 yards with hardly a hand laid on him once he got that ball, and the 49ers are slowly turning Super Bowl 19 into a rout. What a bag of tricks by Bill Walsh. The touchdown put San Francisco ahead 38-16 and Roger Craig became the first player ever to score three touchdowns in a Super Bowl. Came to see an offense and the wrong one showed up. The final voltage in this execution was switched on by the 49er defense. They shut out the Dolphins in the second half, intercepting Marino twice. The first by Eric Wright. The second by Carlton Williamson. It's all over. Super Bowl 19 is in the record books. The 49ers have won it. Dan Marino's year turned into Joe Montana's day. And the San Francisco 49ers became the first team in NFL history to win 18 games in a single season. They were not only champions of the world, but masters of the game.